Hi everyone, welcome to our Facebook Live. Here at Rollins, we know that advising and course scheduling is super important, but we also know it could be super confusing to some students, especially incoming students. And so I have a panelist of people here who can answer your questions today. We've collected some questions from students already. We also have the live feed going so that you can send in your questions as we're talking. So welcome. My name's Aspen Fox. I'm one of the assistant directors in residential life and explorations. I've been working at Rollins for about eight years now. And prior to that, I did both my undergraduate and graduate program here. So I'm super excited to talk with you all today about advising and course scheduling. So um, I'm going to have my panelists introduce themselves. Hi, my name's Megan. I'm a junior here at Rollins College, an international relations major and a minor in sociology pre-law. I'm also a student coordinator and I work at the same office as Aspen, which is the Office of Residential Life and Explorations. And I'm also in a sorority and I'm the chapter president of AOPI. Hi everybody, my name is Gabriel Baranache. I serve as the Associate Dean for Advising in Academic Affairs. I've been a professor at Rollins for 16 years, so since you guys were toddlers, I've been here at the college. <laughs> I love it here and I'm sure you guys will as well. Um, I'll be able to answer questions today about um, registration, about advising, about courses, the great academic things that happen here at the college. So before we get into the nitty gritty of advising and course scheduling, I'm gonna test these two on their Rollins knowledge. So let's do a little bit of <laughs> trivia. So the Sandspur, Florida's oldest college newspaper was first published in what year? There are four options, 1890, 1897, 1887 or 1894? I'm going with 87. 94. Well, Megan's got it. Clearly, <laughs> she's been here long enough to know that. <laughs> Our second question. How much does the Fox statue weigh? 300 pounds, 250 pounds, 200 pounds, or 175 pounds? 175? 250. 250. Dr. B, you got it this time. Amazing. So our last, not trivia question, but fun question, since um, at Rollins we have a lot of our students and our staff and faculty travel abroad. So if you could travel anywhere tomorrow, where would it be and why? You first. You first. Um, so I actually studied abroad in Rome last semester. It was really great. And I got to go to a lot of countries that I wanted to in Europe, but I didn't get to go to Greece. So mm. uh, getting to be in the Mediterranean waters for the first time was an amazing experience. And I really want to go back. And what better place to go to than Greece for that? Amazing. So I've been looking at the uh, pre-matriculation trip that Dr. Allen is going to take to Costa Rica. And I've never been to Costa Rica. And I've been kind of dying to go. And <laughs> So don't be surprised if, if some administrator crashes the trip there <laughs> in August. I'll see if I can pull myself out of the office right before registration. <laughs> so let's get started with some registration questions that first year students and incoming students and transfer students have asked us about. Um, so Dr. V, can you answer how does first year course registration work and who creates the schedule? Sure. So you should be receiving a, an invitation to fill out the course preference form. And I really encourage you to, to think carefully about what you're selecting. Um, because we're going to take that information at, at heart, right? We're going to see your course preferences and we're going to make a schedule accordingly, right? Um, so the course preference form, don't have your mom fill it out. These <laughs> things happen. I've had students in my class ask me, Dr. B, you know, you're a really nice guy. I'm glad I'm in your class, but how did I get here? I said, did you fill out the course preference form? They said, no, my mom did. I said, your mom has impeccable taste and you landed in my class. So that's what happened. So make sure you're the one who fills it out. Um, and then in early June, we're going to assemble a team of faculty. We're going to get together, we're going to huddle up, block ourselves in the, in the war room, and build your schedules, right? So we take the information from your course preference form and build out a schedule for your first semester. Um, so a lot of students have called in and asked, like, what a typical schedule looks like, what does it include, and then why do I have these classes? What would you tell them? Okay, so a typical schedule is going to have four classes in it, right? So something to keep in mind is that classes at Rollins are four credits. Maybe some of your friends who are going to other institutions or your family members who have been to college, normally their, cor their courses have been three, and they've had five classes of three credits each. At Rollins, we ask you to do a lot more work outside of class, be it homework or projects or community engagement activities. So as such, as a result, we, we make our classes worth a little bit more. So you're going to have four classes at four credits, a total of 16 credits per semester. Um, your schedule is going to have four pieces to it. Every student is going to have an RCC, which is the Rollins College Conference first year seminar. 
You'll hear a lot about RCC as you're getting ready to join us. Um, that's kind of your homeroom and your introduction into college life, and we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. The second class you have is going to be depending on the major that you want to explore, right? So part of your course preference form is going to be, I'm exploring uh, philosophy as a major. Or I'm exploring communications as a major. So that'll be your second class. Your third one is going to be one of your general education competency classes. So that could be health and wellness, foreign language, math, ethics, or writing. It'll be one of those five. The course preference form will ask you, you know, which one of those, those really speak to you and do you want to take in the, in, in the fall semester. That'll be course number three. And then the last one is going to be your elective class, right? So we're going to give you a list of courses, of courses that are appropriate for first year students. Um, and you get to pick, hey, I really wanted to try sociology. I've never had sociology in high school. Megan turns out she's a sociology minor, right? That was not yeah. an option for her. She took it as an elective, explored it, mm -hmm. and, and fell in love with, with the discipline, right? So that's going to be your schedule. It's going to be four pieces to it, RCC, major, elective, and a competency. Can you expand a little bit about what the RCC is and maybe sure. the faculty advisor piece? And then maybe, Megan, you can talk about your RCC experience yeah. and um, explain maybe what peer mentors are, because they'll have those in their RCCs. Yeah. So. So RCCs are a lot of fun. It's, it's probably the best class that, that I used to teach um, when I was back with the faculty. Um, it's a first year seminar, so it's gonna be only first year students. Um, there's about 16 or 17 of you. You have a professor. That professor is your academic advisor for the first year. They are kind of your guru, your guide on the side um, that help you navigate the academic piece, um, help you choose classes for the future semesters, um, help you with any issues that you have coming up in terms of you know, getting acclimated to college academics. Um, the great part about RCC is that you have peer mentors that are assigned and embedded in the class. So these are sophomores, juniors, and seniors who have been successful academically at Rollins. They're successful socially. They're involved in, in clubs and organizations. And they're going to help you with those things that maybe a professor can't help you with. right? So navigating housing selection, navigating um, which fraternity or sorority should I rush, well, you can't you can't talk about that fresh first semester, can you? No, that's, <laughs> that's dirty rush, hazing. That's that, dirty but hazing. But that you can rush. Like yeah. there's an option. <laughs> right. So we'll talk about extracurriculars, things you can get involved with. How do you access the tutoring center? How do you make an appointment with your advisor? Things like that. So those peer mentors are there to help you adjust um, to college life. So what's great about that is we have Megan here, and Megan was a peer mentor twice, and now she's working in our <laughs> office, going to help us supervise the peer mentor. So can you talk about what your peer mentor experience was like, what your relationship was like with your mentees in RCC, um, and then maybe what your RCC experience was like? Yeah, sure. So to start off with, basically to summarize, I would say that an RCC is like College 101, especially Rollins edition. Uh, so you basically learn how to do the smaller things that a professor wouldn't really think to teach you. So like, how do you like write a proper email to a professor like that's not your high school teacher? and how do you uh, go to the tutoring center and what things are to do around Winter Park that you're like feeling homesick and want to know like some good food nearby that's maybe local from your, your country if you're international. There are different things you can go to uh, to a peer mentor. So you have two peer mentors. It's a really cool thing because they're really close to you in age. And sometimes when you're similar like major or interest, sports, you can go to them for that. When I was a peer mentor both times, I had amazing faculty that I was working with. and got to build relationships with two faculty members that I never took a class with. And I probably will never because I'm approaching my senior year. So if it wasn't for this experience, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to really have that relationship built with them. And then I also had an amazing co. Uh, so it's, that's the second peer mentor. And the, the first time it was with this wonderful girl that I had just met through the experience and through interviewing and I wouldn't have known her either because she was a graduating senior and we were in completely different fields and she was a transfer so we wouldn't have been in a class otherwise and now we were working together and now we're still friends and the second time it was one of my sorority sisters so I really got to bond in that way which was really interesting. Uh, when I went through the RCC experience as a first year student, I was in this really interesting class called Mo Modern Romance, uh, which I believe is being offered this year with a different title. And it's basically about analyzing how love and relationship has, has uh, transitioned and changed throughout the years. And it was a sociology course, and that's the first time I got introduced to sociology. So if it wasn't for my RCC experience, then I wouldn't have really known about sociology and wouldn't have gone on to take more classes and then eventually minor. Uh, I would say that 
the relationship with my advisor that I still have today is I still go to her to ask her questions, especially with my, specifically to my minor that my major faculty advisor can't. And even though she's not my official advisor, we still have that relationship. And we, because I'm a minor, we still like interact and I still go to her for advice, which is really important. It's not just a one year or one semester relationship. It goes on to your senior yeah. year. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'll just add that, that. How do you pick your RCC, right? So you're going to have on your course preference form the big list of 33 sections of RCC to choose from. Rank your top eight, right? And then we're going to run it through an algorithm and you'll get you know, your, your number one, two, or three selection mm -hmm. based on that. Again, you need to fill out the form. If mom fills it out, you're going to get mom's top eight. <laughs> um, so we want to make sure that you get what, what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And they're, all disciplines are offered, right? These are fun, uh, dynamic conversation debate based classes it's not a lecture hall with 150 kids okay. these are very interactive sorts of courses right and 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 courses that that your professors love to teach so dr b you said that um in the first year course schedule there's usually a general education class so can yeah. you talk a little bit about our general education program and what foundations is sure so you're coming to Rollins, you're coming to a liberal arts college. And what, what does that mean? What does it mean to be in a liberal arts institution? What does a liberal arts education mean? Um, so the way that I explain it to students and to families is it's, it's a broad education. You are liberally educated across all fields of knowledge. You don't just learn the, the narrow part of your major. You get that. You get the knowledge of the major, but you also get breadth of education. Um, so that means you're gonna, everyone who comes to Rollins is going to have some general education requirements, and there's 10 of them total. The five competencies that I talked about earlier, ethics, health and wellness, writing, foreign language, and math is the five. And then the five foundation classes that you're going to take over the four years that you'll be with us. You're going to take a class in the humanities, one in the expressive arts, one in social sciences, one in natural sciences, and then that fifth class is really interesting. So in your junior or senior year is what we call our capstone in the foundations seminar, uh, our, our capstone seminar in the foundations curriculum. And this is where you look at a particular problem or big idea or issue in the world through the lens of the four disciplines you just studied. So you're going to look at the problem of um, environment through the lens of humanities, through the lens of social sciences, natural sciences, and the expressive arts, right? So at the end of your education, you're going to have the, the, the knowledge set from your major, but also the breadth of knowledge that you get from, from the 10 classes in our general education program. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so let me check. I think we might have a question that just came in. We do. So it says, where in the Fox link is the course preference form sheet? Great question. So when you open your FoxLink account, um, you should be on an Explorations tab. When you're on that tab, there will be a list of items that you need to complete. The course preference form will be there. However, the course preference form won't be there if you're a transfer student because you'll have one-on-one -on -one advising with our transfer advisor. So if you're a course preference form, uh, or if you're a transfer student, you don't have to worry about the course preference form. Um, but if you're new, a uh, brand new to college student, you'll see it on your checklist. Um, it'll be right there at the top once you log into your FoxLink account. And so that's actually a great question because my next one was going to be, where can I find my schedule and when will it be released? Okay, so once we're all done with putting your schedule together in early June, you'll, you'll get a notification. I believe June 5th is our target, late afternoon. Um, Cinco de Junio, for those of you following at home, not Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Junio. Um, <laughs> your, your schedule will be dropped, right? Um, and you'll be able to find that on FoxLink, right? You go to FoxLink and you'll see the classes that have been, that, that we've, the schedule that we've built for you. Awesome. Cool. I have one last question. Sure. So we get sometimes that, okay, these faculty created these great schedules for me, but what if I want to make a change to it? How do I do that? Very easy to do, right? So once your schedule has been released, um, you'll, you'll receive some contact from the dean of the faculty's office, from faculty members. We'll be reaching out to you, um, inviting you to to have some feedback for us, right? So um, we'll talk through your schedule with you. We'll explain why did we pick these classes and we'll have the chance to make some changes over the summer. If that doesn't work, orientation happens in, in, in mid-August, late August. You're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with your faculty advisor during orientation where you can make even more switches to your schedule, right? And if that's not good enough, that first week of classes is what we call the add drop week. Um, so a class that was maybe full in June, a seat opens up and you really want to take that class, you can make a switch during that first week of the semester and, and change your schedule around.
during that first week. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The only class you cannot change is your RCC. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in with us today. We're so excited that we got to chat with you, and we hope you get excited about your schedule. Um, I just want to let you all know, as Dr. B said, um, schedules will be released the evening of June 5th. On June 6th and 7th, you'll actually be able to call in or text in to talk to faculty to ask questions about your schedule, um, and they'll be happy to answer them for you. So we're excited, and we hope lots of people call in and get their questions answered so we can explain your schedule to you. So you'll be receiving more information about that. Um, so as always, we're here to help. So you can always contact our office, um, the Office of Residential Life and Explorations, and you can email rle at rollins.edu if you have any questions. So any final thoughts from our guests for our students? Just to keep an open mind when registering for classes and getting advising, uh, listen to your peer mentors, listen to your advisor, because they really have like good input to add in, especially the students have taken similar classes or have friends that have taken similar classes. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll echo what Megan says, right? Really trust the process. Trust that, you know, that your advisors have your best interests at heart, and we're going to do the best to find the schedule that, that speaks to you, to classes that you enjoy, but also ones that will broaden your horizons, right, and, and give you that broad, wonderful liberal education that, that Rollins offers. Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in, and go Tars. See you in August. Bye. Bye. Bye.